Why are starches not optimal? Well, for a number of reasons. High deuterium is one thing. The key thing is high deuterium. Long term, it's not a good thing for your collagen structures, not a good um, energy source because it creates far more reactive oxygen species through complex one in the mitochondria. So that's a long discussion, but it, you know, it's not a good thing in that regard. Now, it can be reduced, the oxidative stress of starch can be reduced through taurine supplementation. One, because it reduces lactate, it forces it through to be processed, and at the same time, the damage that it causes, it lowers in the mitochondria when there's enough taurine in the cell. But, you know, we've got other things to use use for taurine to repair and heal and, and do things in the body. Why use it just to basically um, poison ourselves? So it isn't optimal. It was seasonal that we used. You know, if we take a look historically, we primarily consumed animal foods. The only um, starches that we consumed were grains. They were fermented. We, were, we ate a very small amount. Um, per day and we were very physically active and we were just repleting in many cases glycogen stores people under eight it was only the rich that used to get sick the kings and all that they used to get very sick because and they had their physicians for that reason because they were and they tend to be diabetics and all that and we've got records of that you know um they used to test their urine for the sweetness that means to see how much you know and that was a sign of you know pissing out um, uh, sugar um, that's how they worked out that people had diabetes and that was before even fructose existed because fructose was didn't exist until and it was only brought into Europe after Alexander the Great in the Hellenistic period because it was in, it was first invented in um, in pretty much and some of it got into the Middle East and those areas but it was extremely rare to be used and it was only when people went to the americas and brought the sugar cane back that's when really it took off um in europe so yeah before that that's the sugar part which is the fructose part and all that sort of stuff but even starch it was you know you had some tubers you had that but it was mostly seasonal and a lot of it you know for the other periods of time because you couldn't store it a lot it would um you know, they had to basically either ferment it and it would reduce the anti-nutrients, it would reduce, reduce some of the sugar content and they were just repleting glycogen because they were very physically active. It's only the rich that were suffering. So, But they were also, because they weren't getting enough protein, they tend to be shorter compared to their, their lords and masters. Um, so you, you have to see, when you're looking at history, you have to see it through the prism of these things. So you have to understand the whole the whole nature of what were the people look at their images how were they depicted these were the peasants were shorter these were you know and we can see it actually even in tribal groups in the, that are agri agrarian tribal groups in africa that are under eating protein tend to be shorter and all that mm -hmm. and then you've got just down the track you've got a whole lot of mass side that are just six foot because they're getting more new animal nutrition and living longer than those agrarians so these are the these things. they may not get, be getting si diseases of civilization, but they're not living long years. Why? Because they're damaging their mitochondria, and eventually they get to an area where they have too much senescence and they drop dead much earlier. Um, so it's not optimal from a from many path for many reasons. So, and I could see you're on a bike there, so maybe you, and uh, that's. You know, a lot of people think that you need carbs for that. No, you don't. Actually, some of the top um, uh, champions at the moment are people in this space that are doing, like, um, long-distance running. Um, like the 100-mile one is a carnival guy that's actually won the 100-mile one. He does steak and eggs, and he's won the 100-mile in America a number of times now and just blitzed his own record. So it's just nonsense. Gluconeogenesis covers all your glucose requirements. At the end of the day, what you need is energy, and the best energy is fat. And because you, when you've got fat and you're using fat, you've got more than sufficient fat. And remember, Bart actually explains the three-gear system in the muscles. So you've got mitochondria, which are producing ATP, 
and then phosphocreatine that is recycling the phosphate. It comes over here, adenosine diphosphate, gives the phosphate, adds it on to, these are all interlinked. Adds, there's no aerobic and anaerobic and all that. That's just nonsense. It's it's all <laughs> it's all aerobic. So at, over here, you're using oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria, produce ATP. And then you release that phosphate. That phosphate then attaches and goes all the way back over here to the filaments, the contractile filaments. And there, there is where it, it gives ADP, that phosphate, ATP, produces the sort of glucose that is required, you know, from the glycogen stores. And basically then, bang, the contraction. And then it releases that phosphate. And that goes all the way back through that create, the phosphocreatine. These loops, those three gears that are interlocked that pass these things back and forward. That's how you have to see it. Um, so fundamentally, fundamentally, these are the sort of recycling, um, uh, you know, of these compounds to basically have this gear system working to basically be able to produce energy for these contractile effects that are happening in the muscle um, fiber. So... Your body can produce all the glucose that it requires to pr provide it there or from the glycogen stores or there to be then utilised by that energy that is produced close to the filaments to provide for that contractile effect. So, nope. Um, and so that contractile effect is through this sort of a gear system that exists in the in the muscles. So that's the most simplistic terminology that I can give you. But K gives you a more scientific, with all the scientific, I'm giving you a simplified to make it easy for people to understand. So when you're doing that sort of exercise, you do not need at all. Your body will provide everything through the backbone of glycerol or um, some of the gluconeogenic amino acids, you know, like alanine, for instance. So your body can can produce all that sort of stuff. So it's not a requirement. The requirement for glucose in the body is zero grams. And it's not only me saying it. Even the United States Department of Agriculture, the USDA, on their official site, because this is physiology. It's in physiology books. Basic physiology will tell you the requirement for glucose is zero because your body can produce it. Essential nutrients are things that your body can't synthesize. So you can't synthesize the essential amino acids. You need to get them from the diet. You can't synthesize essential fatty acids. You need to get them from the diet. And a number of micronutrients that you need to get from the diet. Well, that's how the body works, guys. Um, you know, So that's how we have to see it. And if you're in a glacial period where you've got ice all the way down to the tropics, what plants? All you've got is these big animals. They have to be big with a lot of fat on them to protect them, but also to have really strong ability to, to tear through the snow to get through, through to the grasses. You know, so this is how it operates. And they have to stomp through that to break up the ice to be able to, and that sort of melts in the summer slightly, which allows some of the grass to grow. And then these animals can actually consume it all year round. So, I mean, and this is what you see in, if you see animals in, in mountainous areas where there's more snow, they're literally clearing up to be able to access the grass. So that's how they operate. So they still do the same thing today. Why wouldn't they? It's genetically determined. Um, through all, all these generations of ruminants. Um, so nothing's changed there. And we just hate them. And what do you get from them? Well, fat and, and, uh, and protein, pretty much. So, yeah, so in, in that's the story as far as that. No, it's completely unnecessary and deleterious long-term from the deuterium side, both for your collagen structures being too stiff and not maintaining the right level of rigidity. And on the other hand, um, that's why constantly fasting, you know, like if you're in a fasted mimicking diet, constantly like these crackpots in the longevity space tell you low protein, well, then you're not getting enough 
of the deuterium, then you're going to have problems as well. Your collagen structures are, are going to have some derangements, but that's another story.